and thank you so much for that prayer, Valerie. We greet you, beloved, in the wonderful name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Uh, blessed by my Father. Blessed by my Father. Genesis chapter 1, verse 26. Then God said, let us make mankind in our image, in our likeness, so that they may rule. Verse 27. So God created mankind in his own image. In the image of God, he created them. Male and female, he created them. God blessed them and said to them, be fruitful in number and increase. Fill the earth and subdue it. The grass withers and the flower fades, but the word of our Lord shall stand forever. Amen. Beloved, it is an honor to gather together to hear what saith the word of the Lord. Indeed, the grass withers and the flower fades, but the word of our Lord shall stand forever. And I pray that these words spoken in the beginning may stand, that they may work in your life today. Uh, let us close our eyes as we pray. Father in heaven, we invite your Holy Spirit. Speak to us. Our hearts are ready. Transform us, for we are your subjects, your vessels to be used in the mighty arm of the Holy Spirit. We are asking now that your will is done here on earth as it is done in heaven. For this we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I may not be able to see you, but wherever you are, just smile and say in your heart or say out loud if you can, I am blessed and highly favored. I am blessed and highly favored. The gospel story, beloved, and it is a story, begins in Genesis chapter one. This is the place to start. It is where God takes Job in the midst of his questionings while trying to make sense of the world around him. You do remember that he uh, faced a very painful ordeal. He has grave losses. You remember, lost his cattle, lost his donkeys, sheep and camels, servants and children, sons and daughters. Then his own flesh is afflicted and his wife tells him to curse God and die. And after false accusations fly around, God takes him back to Genesis, takes him to the beginning, and he asks a question, where were you when I laid the foundations of the, of the earth? Who marked off its foundations? Where were you when the morning stars sang together and all the sons of God sang for joy? I don't know what you're going through this morning. I don't know what your experience is today, but let's go back to the beginning to understand God's heart. And maybe we too, like the sons of God, will sing for joy. I pray that when we are done with our message today, that you together with uh, uh, the stars will sing together with the sons of God will sing for joy. And so God takes him to the beginning. Let's go back to the beginning. And the story really begins with Adam and Eve. The question is, who is Adam? Uh, Luke 3 answers this question for us. In the genealogy of Jesus, each one there has a father. It is a long genealogy. Uh, the list is long, but I will simply go to the names that may be familiar to us. Levi, son of Simeon, son of Judah, uh, David, son of Jesse, son of Obed, son of Boaz, Jacob, son of Isaac, son of Abraham, and son of of terror. Seth, son of Adam, and watch this, Adam, the son of God. In this list, Adam is the only one considered the son of God. He's the only one described in those terms. Each one has a father named, but Adam is named as the son of God. Underline this, for we will come back to it in coming days. What does God do for his son? What does God do for his daughter? 
the first thing that God does immediately after creating Adam and Eve is to bless them. And I want you to catch this, underline it, put it in bold and in italics. As you read the creation story, he goes oh, one thing after another, but now he comes on the last day. The crowning act is the creation of humankind. Let us meet man in our own image. It is an intimate process, not just the utterance of words. It is not just the words that create and bring into being, but now his own hands come into earth, get into the mud, get dirty as it were. Intimately, you see him there when the body lies and he breathes the breath of life into man. What an intimate moment. But after that, the very first thing is uh, this body becomes man as it becomes a human soul. As we see this living person, the first thing that God does is to speak words and the words that come out of his mouth are blessings. The first experience in life for Adam and Eve is the experience of being blessed by the Father. Uh, this blessing, beloved, is two-pronged. Firstly, it is God's purpose. He says to them, be fruitful and multiply. Fill the earth and subdue it. Rule over every living creature. Uh, this, beloved, is purpose. And since you can't turn to your neighbor, write in the comments, I've got purpose. Write somewhere or say it in your heart, I've got purpose. The first blessing is to give them purpose. It is to give them duty. It is to give them a place in his own creation, something that they must do. And then uh, the second thing that he does, the second part of the blessing is this. It is God's provision. After he pronounces blessings, he then says to them, I give you every seed bearing plant on the face of the earth and every tree that has fruit with seed in it. They will be yours for food. You see, Eden was God's mountain, the king's table, if you wish. And Mephibosheth, come to the table and eat. And so God says to them, I have provisions here for you. The father's got you covered. I have food for you to eat. And it is plenty, as you can eat of every fruit that is there. You can eat of every plant that I've given you. You can take part and participate. You can uh, intake and you can be sustained by that which I've put already prepared before you arrive. I want to say to you, beloved, God's provisions were there before we came. Before he brought us, he made sure that the provisions were there for us. If God brings you into it, he will take you through it because he's already given you the providence for it. I want to say to you, beloved, before you enter the day, the bread has already already been provided. And so to Mephibosheth, he said, I've got you covered. But he also speaks to Esther and he says, go forth. I've got a purpose for you. You shall be the head and not the tail. He says to Adam that you are to subdue the earth. He says to rule over the created things. You are to be my images on the earth. So send I you. I want to let you know, beloved, that to everybody that is a new creation in Christ, these two things are guaranteed one you're given purpose and then two you are given provisions and so God says to us that I am sending you he says to us that I am sending you but I also give you the guarantee I'll never leave you nor forsake you I've given purpose but I also give you a foundation of security uh, this is the uh, modus operandi of God when he meets humanity. Most of us, you see, pray for provision. But I want to say today, let us also pray for purpose and God will bless us. Uh, God meets Abraham and he blesses him. Whenever you find God's people encountering God, there is a guarantee of blessing. God meets Abraham and he blesses him. Listen to what he says. He says, I will bless you and you will be a blessing. And this beloved is a word to you. When God meets you, he says to you, uh, the children of Abraham, I will bless you and you will be a blessing. 
And when you look at Abraham, Abraham has a son. His name is Isaac. What does Abraham do? He blesses Isaac. Isaac is also the father of another man. As a father, he blesses Jacob. Albeit, he was deceived by his wife and by his son. But he blesses Jacob. Jacob's name is changed to Israel. Watch the gospel story. Israel is the father of a nation these 12 sons the bible tells us that israel blesses israel he blesses the house of israel he blesses his children and then watch this when you come to deuteronomy god himself calls israel his son he calls israel his firstborn son and what does he do there we find him in deuteronomy blessing israel he is he says i am a father to you i have brought you and so i bless you this is what the father does beloved he blesses this is his modest operandi God cannot help himself but to bless. He says to them, blessed shall you be in the city. And as you listen to this, these are words for you. Blessed shall you be in the city. Blessed shall you be in the country, whether you are in Johannesburg or whether you are out in the village, out in the farms, whatever situation or context you find yourself in, you can never be outside the reach of God's blessing. I want to let you know that whether you're living in a mansion or in a hut. God says that you shall be blessed. Blessed shall you be. And then he says, blessed shall be the fruit of your body. Some of you are parents here. God says, I am blessing your children, the produce of your ground and the increase of your heads and the increase of your cattle and the offspring of your flocks. God says, I will bless them. And so he is saying that whatever industry you are in, whether you are a farmer, whether you are a businessman, I will bless you. And then watch this. He says, blessed shall be your basket and your kneading bowl. I read this and I say to myself, if you were speaking in today's context, you will be saying, blessed shall be your savings account and blessed shall be your debit account. Blessed shall be your investment portfolio. Blessed shall be your storehouses, whatever finances you have, God says they shall be blessed in Jesus name. Blessed shall you be as you come in. Blessed shall you be when you go out. So whether you are getting into a job, whether you're getting out of a job, God says, I will bless you. Whether you get into a marriage or whether you're getting out of a marriage, if God is your father, you shall be blessed. Blessed shall you be in your going in. Blessed shall you be in your going out. Whether you're getting in or going out in whatever situation, God says, I will bless you. It is not the getting in that is the blessing. It's not the going out that's the blessing. He says, because I shall bless you. And then he says, the Lord will cause your enemies who rise up against you, hallelujah, to be defeated before your face. They shall come out against you, organized in one direction, but they shall flee before you seven ways, scattered, disorganized. When God encounters your enemies, they will come in lockstep, in order, but when they come and meet you, they shall have to first meet your father. And he says, he will disorganize them your enemies shall have to deal with your father blessed shall you be the lord will command the blessing on you in your storehouses and in all to which you set your hand and he will bless you in the land which the lord your god is giving you whatever your hand sets out to do god says i will bless you remember joseph when joseph gets out to work the bible gives us this description that whatever he touched it was blessed i pray that in the labors that you get into today that God's blessing shall be upon you I pray that you shall excel in your workplace I pray that indeed your business shall be incomparable to your competitors. I pray that you will be the head and indeed not the tail for the God, for God says you shall be above only and not beneath. This is the father blessing his children. And this morning, I pray God's blessings over you. Oh, that you would be blessed indeed. And if, if you think that it's just an Old Testament thing, watch this. When God becomes man, if you have never understood the heart of God, I pray you'd understand it today. If you didn't know what his mind and desires are for you, I pray they would be clearer than they would ever be before, that you would have a clarity of mind concerning God's thoughts for you. When he becomes man, what is the first
first thing he says, what this Matthew chapter 5 gives us the Sermon on the Mount. This was God's first sermon in his public ministry. And what is it that God does? Matthew records this first sermon. In chapter 5, there is what we call the be attitudes. But listen carefully to his first words. In the first sermon, he says, blessed are the poor in spirit. Blessed are those who mourn. Blessed are the meek and blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness. Now, blessed are the merciful. Blessed are the pure in heart. Blessed are the peacemakers. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness sake. If I didn't know better, I would say that God is a blesser. It's in his nature. It's what he does and he's got you covered. Whether you are a sinner, he says blessed are the poor in spirit. Whether you are on your sanctification journey and God has purified your heart. Whether you are pure in heart, a blessed uh, peacemaker, God says, I will bless you. He's got us all covered. Whether we are at the beginning of our Christian journey or at the end of it, whether we feel like a harlot, whether we feel like the, the chief of sinners, God says, I've got you covered with my blessings. Oh, beloved. Uh, come to him today. And my invitation is come to the Father. For when you come to him, you're coming to the blesser. There was a situation here in the country I'm serving in, in South Africa, where ladies would come from a poor home and they would get into universities and uh, soon their lives would be transformed and people would comment and give compliments, a wonderful dress, and they would say, ah, oh, thank you so much, I am blessed. And soon it is not a dress, it is a matching shoe. And they would say again, when the commentary comes and the commendations come, I am blessed. And then it was an iPhone and she would say, I am blessed. And then it was uh, a house and she would say, I am blessed. And soon people began to say, ah, ah, don't just tell me you're blessed. Please point us to your blessing. Blesser. I want to let you know today that we have a blesser in heaven. He is greater than every blesser on this earth, for he does not come with strings attached. His love is agape love. He says, I will bless you, my child. And this is not an exploitative love like the love of these blessers who exploited these women and expected them to subject themselves, make themselves inhuman in order that they can simply have the benefits of material things. God says, I am your blesser. Don't seek a blesser elsewhere, for I will be the source, Abraham. I will be the, uh, the, the, the ultimate reward for you. Oh, beloved, I simply invite you to come to the Father, for he will bless you. Come to him today. He supplies strength for the weak. Come to him today. He is available for the tempted and the tried. Come to him today. He sympathizes and he saves. He strengthens and sustains. He guards and he guides. He heals the sick and he cleanses the leper. He forgives sinners. He discharges debtors. He delivers the captive. He defends the feeble, blesses the young, blesses the aged, blesses the diligent, blesses the meek. Oh, that he will bless you today in Jesus' name. Oh, that we will receive the blessings of God. Blessed be your work. Blessed be you in your employment. Blessed be your finances. May God bless your family and bless your business. Blessings, blessings I pronounce in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Let us close our eyes in prayer. Our loving Heavenly Father, we are grateful for you are our blesser. We don't need to go to Egypt. We don't need to go seek help in Babylon. We don't need to go to idols. We don't need uh, to go where others may go, for we have a God in heaven, and he is our father. We thank you that the first thing that you do for humanity is bless them. We thank you that the first sermon in the mount is a sermon of blessings, and we thank you that even when we are encountering the very presence of our God, Seen as though we may be, we can still be assured that he is the same today as he was when he encountered and created Adam. So, Father, bless your children today. As they go through this day, may they go as blessed sons and daughters of the living God. This we ask humbly and gratefully in the name of Jesus. Let the church say, Amen.